just days after Wagner mercenary group leader Yevgeny Prigozhin was killed in a plane crash, Russian President Vladimir Putin demanded an oath of loyalty from all mercenaries fighting for Moscow. That order took immediate effect. And Russia has conceded that the downing of the plane may have been deliberate. But the death of Prigozhin and his top aides has also left a leadership vacuum in Wagner. This could jeopardize the future of Russian operations in Africa, where it has been providing military support and training to several countries since 2017. Joining me now to talk about the future of the Wagner Group in both Russia and Africa is Katrina Doxy. She's an associate director and associate fellow for the Transnational Threats Project at the Center for Strategic and International Studies. So first off, in addition to Prigozhin, the head of Wagner's combat and training operations and head of finances also died in the plane crash. So who's leading the group right now? So they're left in this interesting situation where their top strategic level leadership has been taken out in this plane crash, but they still maintain a large number of mid-level leaders across their operations. So the day-to-day -day continues to function more at that tactical operational level and at the high up level, there's certainly leadership coming down from the Kremlin, from the Ministry of Defense, giving guidance uh, in the long term. But I think that we're really seeing that those mid-level leaders and troops on the ground are really waiting from that signal from Russia of what the leadership will look like going forward. The internal leadership council within Wagner has been relatively silent since the deaths of Prigozhin and Utkin and their top aides. And we're in a little bit of a wait and see period as the Russian Ministry of Defense tries to shore up their different relationships that have been facilitated by Wagner in recent years. And as I mentioned, Putin has demanded oaths of loyalty from mercenaries fighting for Russia. How might the relationship between Russia and the group change in this new era? I think that one of the complicated things about the relationship between Prigozhin and Putin was always that. Wagner was meant to be carrying out Russian state interests, but Prigozhin was given a long leash. And so even though he did really pursue those Russian interests in places like Africa and the Middle East where Wagner was operating, he was still also promoting his own political interests, certainly with their involvement in the war in Ukraine. Prigozhin was trying to position himself for political power and influence to raise the influence of the Wagner group. And that kind of free reign is what ultimately led to Prigozhin being put in a position where he could lead this mutiny in June, where he could step out of line. And so I think what we're going to see going forward is even if Russia continues to use the model of having quasi-independent contractors working on its behalf, which I believe it will, I think that we'll see them kept on a much tighter leash. And this call for loyalty oaths is the first step in that process. Okay, and just days before that plane crash, Prigozhin released a video pledging to make Africa more free. Can you describe the extent of Wagner Group operations in Africa and where the group has been most active? Wagner's been active in various countries in Africa uh, for the past about six or seven years. So. Wagner has been very active in Libya, where it's helped to support the forces related to Khalifa Haftar. But it's also, in sub-Saharan Africa, built up large-scale operations in places like Sudan, Mali, the Central African Republic, and others. Particularly in these sub-Saharan African contexts, we see Wagner exchanging its various security and intelligence services for access to natural resources, particularly mining operations related to gold and gemstones, as well as energy resources and timber, uh, and at the same time, also furthering Russian state interests, geopolitical and military. All right, Katrina Doxy, thank you so much.